Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Kana Bridge of Spirits. This time I'm going to show you where to find all of the collectibles in the Forgotten Forest area. Uh, no real spoilers here, you will need the bow, but you need it to access this area anyway. Um, and I might show some snips of uh, bosses, that's just because that's where you get some rot. But other than that, no big spoilers here. All right, so the way this guide will work is if you're looking for a specific item or specific collectible, check the video description for the timestamps and the chapters. Uh, but I will first go through all 14 rot, then the six hats, the three flower shrines, the two spirit males, and then the remaining cursed chest. There are technically two cursed chests, but one of them contains a hat. So we'll wind up covering that in the hat section, but I'll label it accordingly in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. The first rot can be found in the shooting minigame on a tree log near the woods shrine. So after you clear out this shrine, you can just drop down here, and then you want to press L1 to pulse out the minigame, I guess. And then you'll have to shoot four targets, the uh, P-hats. And then once you shoot the fourth one in time, you'll get a little bit of a celebratory jingle, and the rot drops onto the log. And then... Go ahead and collect that. Next up, we have a water cave here. Uh, this is also sort of near the wood shrine. It's also near the hat cart. So there is a little cavern here. It's not necessarily like behind a waterfall or anything. It's just like a little stream that runs in here. But you just pulse at these little pillars and you'll get the rot. The third one is under a pile of leaves near the water shrine. This one takes a little bit of setup. And this setup is going to be used several times throughout this guide. There is, are actually a lot of collectibles in this little area. Um, I actually, when I was searching for everything, I couldn't believe how many there were. So you want to take the tier, bring it over here. I didn't mean to rhyme. And then there is a brick that you want to uh, put your rot under. And then you want to move it over here. Right here, near the warp point. Go ahead and click there. Okay, there's nothing under these piles of leaves down this little alleyway, so you don't have to worry about those. But once the brick is ready, go ahead and plant it, and then you can use the rot to move this blockade, and you don't have to use the brick anymore. But this is the pile of leaves that the uh, rot is under. So again, from that same water shrine tier, you want to summon it, but now you can bring it up through the, um, through the pathway that you just opened. So you go ahead and snake it up there, and then turn right, and then just press R1 near the leaves, and you can just drop it off, and it'll, uh, it'll disappear. Go ahead and collect the rot. And again, we will be back here a few times. Next up, near the Brambly Bridge, uh, this is after that water shrine, not too far after. You can follow this stream down here, and this actually leads to a meditation spot, uh, but a rot is back here as well. I'll be doing a separate guide for meditation spots, um, technically, they're not collectibles on the minimap, so I didn't want to include them in these guides. But there's a meditation spot right here, but we'll cut that out. Instead, you want to turn to the right, and then there is a rot under this uh, stone here. So you just want to lift that up and collect the rot. Over there. All right, somewhat near the God Tree Shrine, there is a hanging pot on a branch. It's glowing purple. Just shoot it with an arrow and the rot drops down. All right, after you've cleared out the God Tree Shrine, uh, you can zip up using the bow. I think it's called a whip. I remember seeing that somewhere. Uh, but there is a, a rot over here. You just want to jump along these platforms. And this is after you clear out the shrine. You can climb up here, otherwise this won't be available. It'll be surrounded by enemies. But there's the rot. We now are going to get three rot at once. So once we defeat this mini boss here, which is the Sprout Captain, uh, we will be awarded three rot once we sort of do the little story event inside the shrine. Uh, just in case you're wondering why am I doing so much damage when in my regular guide I didn't, it's because I forgot I was playing on story mode in this section. <laughs> I was replaying the game to better organize my footage and my notes, and I totally forgot to change the difficulty by the time I got here, but boss does go down pretty quick. It's not that hard, uh, but once the boss is down, uh, you want to walk inside, 
and then there will be a little story event and then after that you will be awarded rots seven eight and nine when this happens you can actually see them pop up they start as little purple wisps and then they form into actual rot next up when you get to the lantern cave area this is accessible after you break or cleanse all four shrines there will be a stone sort of near the entrance just past the gate it's kind of hard to see but there's actually a few stones and if you take out your mask you can tell where the rod is hiding otherwise you may have to fight an enemy if you pick wrong next up we have another one in the lantern cave area you have to clear all the corruption in this area otherwise this log will not be available it is buried under some leaves, but make sure that the area is completely cleansed, otherwise it won't be available. Next up, after defeating the Shrine Guardian, you will get the final three rot, numbers 12, 13, and 14. So those are all 14 rot, and next we'll move on to the hats. But just like last time, after you defeated the, uh, the captain, you see them pop up in the distance there, and you get all three. So for the first hat, which is the purple mushroom, there is a waterfall near the wood shrine that you can jump behind, and inside this chest is the purple mushroom hat. Next up is the sibling's mask. This is just past that shooting gallery game where we got the very first rot in this guide. You can use the bow to zip across, and inside this chest is the sibling mask. This one is a little expensive to actually purchase though. Next up we have the acorn, which is hat number three. All we have to do to get this is just approach the hat cart. I did notice that you actually have to approach the, the front side of it in order to actually get credit for it. I don't know what that's about. Next up is the deer hat. And in order to get this, we have to put three owls on the pedestals near the sacred tree. And it's also near the sacred tree warp point. So two of them are to the right of the door. So the first one is back here. And this one can be a little annoying to guide. Sometimes it gets stuck on the bush, and it's very funny to like watch the rod try to like brute force their way through a bush with a owl statue, but ultimately it probably won't work. So you will need to be very, very deliberate in how you're guiding them along the path. But once you get them going, you want to just send them to the first pedestal. And then the second owl statue is very close by. It is on this little fork in the road. We do have to wait for the rot to actually place the uh, the owl statues. I do wish you could like split them up. I'm not sure if you could do that in Pikmin. I actually never played Pikmin, but this game kind of makes me want to play Pikmin. Okay. I've just said Pikmin four times. Um, anyway, the second one is right here. So same deal, just deliberately guide it along the dirt road, and then you're going to place it on the second pedestal of the three. Okay, once you got two down, the third one is to the left of the door. It's not too far. It's just to the right of this log. So go ahead and pick that up. And again, you got to be really deliberate. Sometimes these uh, little statues can get caught on debris or logs or other stuff. Um, the, the rot don't really have intelligent pathing a lot of times. They will just go in a straight line, which is helpful in most cases. But when you want to send them on a long journey, it's just kind of frustrating to have to point and click four times but once that third statue goes on the pedestal you will be awarded the deer hat which is pretty cool there you go all right so the next hat is in a cursed chest right here so this one's pretty easy you just got to defeat five really easy enemies in 30 40 seconds not bad at all. Uh, the only challenge here is that sometimes you can't find the enemies. They do spawn around this tree, or this, I guess, group of trees, if you will. So this uh, this sprout back here was just sort of on his own, chilling. Now, uh, don't forget that when you jump and shoot your bow, you actually slow down time, and that does slow down challenge mode timers as well. So use that to your advantage if you feel like you can snipe an enemy out of the air or break open a, uh, a courage point from them. But once the challenge is done, you can open the chest and you will be awarded Taro's hat.
And the final hat is in the Lantern Cave area. After you clear the final storm, you want to just tuck yourself into this little area, and this chest is your reward for clearing out the area. But the storm does have to be uh, turned off, I guess. All right, next up we have the first flower shrine. This one is very close to the water shrine. Uh, like I said, we've been using this setup a lot. There's quite a few things here, and we're not done yet. So this one's kind of obvious, but you just pull the, the tier up this ramp, and then you want to carefully send it over the log. It can fall off, so you got to be very, very careful. Make sure you're just holding your joystick straight up. And then once it drops off, turn it to the right, and then you remove the corruption around the flower shrine. You have plenty of time to do this one, don't worry, and you'll never need one HP to clear a shrine, so don't worry about it. All right, the next one is at the top of the God Tree Shrine. This one requires a little bit of a cool setup. So once you've cleared out the God Tree Shrine and you have access to this flower here, go ahead and zip up. We used this for a rot earlier, but this time we're going to jump across. So it's a pretty big gap, but you can make it. And then you want to tilt this bucket over. That drops the water droplet into the tier. Oh, sorry, it actually brings it over here. Get the rod to move it over to this tier. I don't know why they couldn't have just put the tier there. Anyway, <laughs> once that is sprouted, I'm gonna make a mistake here. You wanna shoot the elevator switch first and then bring out the sprout. The elevator is on a bit of a delay. The switch, uh, the elevator doesn't move immediately as you'll see here. So shoot the switch, then very quickly just press square to summon the, the tier, and then bring it on the elevator with you. Do not drop it off the elevator. It will break when it hits the ground, if not before. But the flower shrine is right here, right behind it. So get that cleansed, press triangle, and get a good amount of currency for your troubles. The final flower shrine is in the lantern cave area. Make sure you clear out all the corruption here. This is before you fight the uh, the boss here. But you wanna summon the tier and then you're gonna bring it into the back of this cavern. And then the shrine is just in this little puddle of water here. What's interesting is that clearing the shrine clears out the cave of all corruption, including that random rogue bush that was there. Thought that was interesting. All right, next up we have the first spirit mail. This one is along the trees near the God Tree Shrine. So as you're about halfway climbing up, uh, you will see this flower. You'll have a little place to drop down instead of like climbing between platforms, you know, climbing between hang points. You actually have to drop down for a second. So just turn around and zip across. And then this, uh, this spirit mail is here. This unlocks the Southwest house in the village, which is a really important house. The next one is near the water shrine. You want to, here we are back again. Told you we'd be here a lot. So there are flowers that are somewhat hidden on these trees. You don't really hear them opening, but you can zip across them and then one more to the left. And then you can see the spirit mail on this tree stump. Just go ahead and grab that. And then this spirit mail unlocks the southeast house back in the village. So really important spirit mail here. Finally, the other cursed chest is near the three pillars in the water uh, after the wood shrine and you're going towards the water shrine uh, you will see these pillars you just press l1 on the switch it brings them up but then there is a hidden switch up here you can see it at the top of the screen so just shoot it but the timing is really strict um, because the pillar does not stop on its way up it literally just goes up and then immediately back down so you got to be careful but just jump at the apex get a running start and then this challenge is pretty easy. You gotta defeat uh, seven enemies in 40 seconds. All the enemies are these flying bat enemies, so really not a big deal. Highly recommend using charged arrows and weaving in your rot abilities. The rot ability will pretty much one-shot the, uh, the enemy. It just drops it right out of the sky, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, there is one tucked behind me that I was unable to see, but there it is. That's the final cursed chest. And those are all the collectibles in the Forgotten Forest. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Cana Bridge of Spirits, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join the community Discord server. The link for that is in the description below. 
I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.